My name is Yuri Gritnev. In a previous digital story, I told how my family became the amazing Gritnevs. In this part, my wife Tonya and I will relate how we came to form our own act. It was based on a combination of circus skills. My path to the world of entertainment started with the merger of two Russian circus families, the Gridnevs from Blagoveshensk in Siberia and the Hermans from Nizhny Novgorod near Moscow. The Gridnevs performed an unsupported ladder act and the Hermans were musical clowns and roller valances. My mother Rosa Herman was 11 and my father Misha Gridnev was 26 when they first met in Harbin, China. They toured the Far East, including China, Hong Kong, the Philippines, Indonesia, Singapore, India and Ceylon. The Gridnefs went on to South Africa and joined Pagel Circus. They were there for five years with the Ladder Act and the Flying Trapeze. The Hermans came to England from India and settled in Hammersmith. That put them in a position to help the Gridnefs when they arrived from South Africa in 1937. Father and mother married, and a year later I came along. Their only spoilt child. I admit it, I was and I loved it. During the Tower Circus seasons, we lived above a bakery in Corn Street. I was christened in St Thomas's Church just across the road. Some of my earliest memories date back to this time, especially during the summer of 1944. I was five and just starting infant school in Devonshire Road. I used to watch the acts in the Tower Circus every day. I especially loved Charlie Caroli. We had the privilege of working with him in later years on his TV show, Right Charlie. Meanwhile, I entered the world in 1939, my real name being Antoinette, but most people have called me Tony or Tonya. At the age of three, I was sent to a local dancing school with my older sister, and I loved it. My sister didn't continue for long but nothing would stop me. I loved being part of the annual show, Happy Feet. At six, I was taken to see a pantomime, and that was it. I wanted to dance in shows like the girls on the stage. At the age of 12, I auditioned for the Graham Nelson's Juveniles and passed. There was just one problem. They required their members to be able to perform acrobatics. Well, with a lot of determination, frustration and dedication, I made it. So I was off to Torquay Pavilion to appear in a Clarks and Rose production of Cinderella. My dream had come true. I will never forget the opening night. I was behind the front tabs and the full pit orchestra struck up the overture. My stomach hit my throat. At the end of the season, my mother managed to send me to a stage school in Chiswick, the Corona Academy. Many well-known actors have trained there. I was so proud of my Corona uniform and the reputation the school had with students such as Richard O'Sullivan and Fraser Hines and many others. The Amazing Gridnefs were nearing their final performance in 1950. They did a season with Wilkie Circus in New Brighton. This was one of the greatest programmes I had ever seen and I had seen some great ones, namely at Bertram Mill Circus at Olympia. It was here that I saw the great Rudy Horn with his unicycle and juggling. I desperately wished to do this. I had the opportunity to practice throughout the summer and was nearly ready. In 1951, we spent 11 months with Radio Circus in France. I had my first unicycle and practiced every day. There was still no room for me, but I continued to practice and even had a costume made. Unfortunately, the Gridnefs decided to call it a day. I got my chance at last and joined my parents for a cut-down version, which we named the Three Gridnefs. We added my unicycle and juggling to the act and toured for four years in the remaining theatres. We even closed a few. I worked with Norman Barrett in pantomime in Kokodi. He was presenting Van Dyke's dogs and we became lifelong friends. He is now known as the greatest ringmaster. We worked on the bill with many of the stars of the day, including Mel Torme, Anne Shelton and Joan Regan. And on my 16th birthday, we were on the bill with Guy Mitchell, a big name from the USA. On the Saturday, Guy threw a party in my honour. We had become quite friendly and conversed in Russian. He was brought up in Yugoslavia, where they had to learn Russian in school. 
My early days were providing me with lots of performing experience. Each afternoon at school would be a mixture of tap, ballet, modern, mime, drama, fencing and makeup. I was in heaven. Through the school I was able to work. I did some modelling for mini modes, some TV and a lot of films such as St Trinian's, Trouble in Store and Million Pound Note. I encountered stars such as Gregory Peck, Norman Wisdom and many others over the years. In later years I also ventured into film and TV work as an extra in many programmes including a Russian officer in Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, a second shreve in Doctor Who and my first experience as a clown in an advert for Jacob's Club's Biscuits. I was allowed to keep this costume and used it in our clown shows. Come each Christmas, it was Panto. Christmas of 1955 was quite special. The Panto was Mother Goose, starting in Ride, the Isle of Wight. It was a special year for me. The act in the Panto was the three Gridnefs. It so happened that they were in the same digs. One day, my friends and I were sitting at the table when Yuri first walked in. I turned to my friends and said, I will marry him. We became friends through that season, but nothing more. The following year, I was working at the Ideal Home Exhibition, Olympia, demonstrating the goblin teas made. <laughs> I was dressed in a red goblin outfit that was not very attractive. Imagine my horror when I looked up and saw the man of my dreams, Yuri, was walking towards me. He took me home that night and our courtship began. That summer, I worked as a dancer and part-time redcoat at Butlin Skegness. That same summer, while touring the variety theatres, we were in Skegness at the Parade Theatre. The show was Carol Levis and His Discoveries, an early form of talent show. I was on train duty that Saturday, so we grabbed some time and got to know each other better. We had offers to tour the USA and Germany, but my mother would not leave the UK. A bit selfish as she had toured the world. I got fed up waiting for national service and joined the RAF regiment for three years. Even as a child, I wanted to be in the RAF. Whilst Yuri was in the RAF, I joined Wilby Lund's company and we worked London Cabaret in summer season. In Cabaret, we were regulars at the Café Royal, Dorchester, Savoy and Hilton. I did seasons in Cromer, Southport and Ilfracombe. I served in the RAF in Northern Ireland and saw active service in Cyprus during their fight for independence. When my time in the RAF ended in 1961, we got married and started our own act. In February 1962, our son Peter was born. That summer was the first of two seasons we did at Chessington Zoo. We were part of Gilbert Circus, who were resident in the zoo. In autumn, we tried the Northern Clubs, but soon found that our act was too technical and big to be accommodated at most venues. We had to adapt to a smaller, more contained performance that was more suited to the venues we were to work. In a working man's club in Doncaster, we followed an act on stage called Jerry Dorsey. He later changed his name to Engelbert Humperdinck. At the Wishing Well, Swinton, the audience were busy eating and drinking and paying no attention to us. This was until we reached our last trick, the fire torches. Yuri caught his hair alike. I shouted for him to stop and brushed it out with my hand. I continued with the trick and we took seven curtain calls and were late at our second venue. By now we had two daughters, Natasha and Lara. When we were working in the theatre, the children would sit in the wings so they could see us performing. They were forbidden to move. In the clubs, we would leave them in the communal dressing room. It was hard work arriving with all our props, plus two toddlers and a carry cot, usually through the audience. In 1969, we did a week's variety at the Bristol Hippodrome. Joe Brown was topping the bill. On arriving for band call on Monday morning, we were directed to our dressing room, which, as usual for speciality acts, was at the top of the building. We were about to mount the stairs with a seven-year-old, a five-year-old and a pram. Joe Brown stepped in and offered us his number one dressing room, which was at the side of the stage. How kind of him, but not a good idea with a one-year-old baby. 
While having a drink following a round of golf in Yarmouth with Russ Abbott, he introduced me to a young Les Dennis, who he said would make it big one day. With me on this photo is Frank Carson, Stan Boardman, Renato, Roger DeCorsi, Russ Abbott, Richard O'Sullivan and Les Dennis. During an eight-week season at Butlin's Pofelli, we had four different stars. Frank Carson, Ken Dodd, Les Dennis and the Flatters. On the last of Frank's weeks, he asked us who was on the next week. We said, Ken Dodd. He said, maybe. On the first day of Doddy's week, the tax news hit the headlines. We had to do extra shows due to the interest of the public. I made many good friends through show business golf. There were no stars on the golf course, only your ability to play the game. I did continue to have contact with Frank Carson. He lived in Blackpool and was a fellow member at the Old Lynx Golf Club in St Anne's. As Yuri and Tonya, we spent many years working in variety theatres, summer seasons and London hotels, also nightclubs including Churchill's in Bond Street and the Jacker Clubs in Soho. In fact, we have worked every type of venue you can think of. One night we started at Royal Festival Hall with a band of the Royal Artillery, followed by Lyons Corner House, Coventry Street, with an eight-piece dance band. We ended up in the Dog and Duck in Wilsdon with a broken-down piano. We even did Buckingham Palace twice, where we met the Queen Mother and the Duchess of Kent. We also did TV shows like Sooty Show, Noel Edmonds' Lucky Numbers, Cracker Jack and Chipperfield's Xmas Show. We did a number of TV shows in Wales where it was hard to know when you were due on stage as we were introduced in Welsh. From the middle 70s, we worked for many years in the holiday camps, including Warners, Butlins and Pontins. Living in London at this time, we thought nothing of driving to the coast, working two camps and then hightailing it at home so that I could get the children up and off to school on time. Wishing to work abroad, we put together an app called Masquerade. It was aimed at continental audience and told a story while incorporating juggling with everyday items and finishing with the ladder balance. Norman was with us in Brussels and of course he took over the stage management. It was quite successful and we did three months in Malta, three months in Israel, a month in Belgium and a month in Finland. We also took part in a world cruise from Pakistan to Jordan. Although we enjoyed the work, we did not enjoy the smoky atmosphere. By luck, we managed to get into schoolwork with our clown act. At first it was just Christmas, and eventually it became our full-time work. We introduced workshops and included the children in our act. We dressed them and made them up as famous clowns. This made us very popular with the schools, as it was educational. We travelled from Land's End to John O'Groats each year, and the Isle of Man every third year. On our last visit, we did every school on the island. By now, we had finished with the holiday camps and enjoyed the clean atmosphere in the schools. As we were thinking about retiring, we met an old artist friend called Alan McPherson, who had started a circus school in Blackpool. He suggested that we stop touring and joined him. After a couple of years, we did, and formed Blackpool Circus School. Unfortunately, Alan died and we were left to run the school. We were joined by Roger Mireles, a flying trapeze artist who had worked many times in the tower, and Jose Hermida, a Spanish acrobat. We were fortunate to hire the sports hall at Highfield High School and taught all items of circus, including the trapeze and acrobatics. We also did outreach work, mainly in schools, and joined in fates and galas. We continued to do this work, but as Blackpool Circus School, but that is another story.